Hello, we thank God for this morning that God has opened the door for us to meet again. And I believe you are well, you are sound, you are good, and God is doing a new thing in your lives. And we thank God that I know that God who has begun a good work in you will perform until the day of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm here also to continue with what I've started with you all this while. And I know that you pay attention to God's word and you will learn so much about the word of the Lord that is about to come to change your life, to transform you and to take you from faith to faith, glory to glory, favor to favor, blessing to blessing and honor unto honor. I know it will also take you from promotion to promotion, the miracle to miracle, because the word of God is so powerful. He said, the word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. He said, the entrance of his word give us, give us light and light to the simple. So you need the word of God that can transform you. The word carries authority and power. The word Bible says uh, uh, has been tried in the fire seven times. May God bless you. I want us to pray. Father, we thank and bless you for this hour that you've opened special doors for those who are yet to marry. And I thank and bless you that you have already answered your prayer concerning husbands and wives, concerning how they can uh, establish a family. And I bring them before you, O Lord, today in the name of Jesus, and I pray that they are listening to your word this morning, especially those who haven't married the Lord, my God, can the anointing of God will come upon them to open their doors, because the doors have been opened already in the Spirit, and we call upon the Holy Ghost to manifest them as we share this word, the Lord, my God, about marriage, and I pray that your people will be blessed, and then their hope and their expectations in you will come to pass from today in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, we'll be sharing about uh, Naomi, Ruth, and then Boaz, who intended to marry Ruth. And then uh, we have reached a situation where uh, Boaz was ready uh -huh, to marry uh, Ruth. Uh -huh. So he made up his mind to see the others in, in the town gates. And then he ha have to meet many I mean, all kinds of people as elderly people, and he gathered people to be a witness to uh, the marriage that he has intended to perform. And then he wanted to become a redeemer, to redeem the name of the dead person who married Ruth and it was no more, so that in the process he, he could marry Ruth. And then he also intended to. Uh, by the land that belongs to the deceased, so that in order to marry the wife and all those things, he went to the city gate, he sat down with the elders, and all those things went on smoothly. And uh, many people came there, the elders, and they were all witness, witnesses to what um, uh, Boaz intended to do. So, and I believe that as you are listening, it is time that God is going to help you to take a step about marriage and God is bringing your partner and then it's going to happen from this time going because it is the prophetic indication that God is, is doing something new in your life. Remember when Elijah was with the pool and he was enjoying the pool for many months and God asked him to move and he didn't want to go because he, he had been enjoying the pool and then also he had also been enjoying food from heaven, angels or ravens feeding him twice a day. And then he was not preaching fast and doing anything anymore. And, and when the time came for God to uh, uh, inform him to leave, he didn't want to go and he didn't want to go anywhere. Uh, but God dried the pool and he, he commanded the angels to stop feeding Elijah. And I believe it was the prophetic indication that Elijah must go forward. It means that whatever situation you have found yourself in, uh, if, if you are having the comfort, you're having the peace of mind, having the joy. And earlier on, as a Christian, God was answering your prayers and things were moving on smoothly. All of a sudden, things change because I believe God took you from milk level into the bone level right, so that you begin to chew bones. And the Bible says, 1 Peter 2 verse 2, it said, drinking the sincere milk of the word of God. It said that we may grow thereby. So uh, babies depend on milk, but adults depend on bones, uh, calcium. And I believe God has taken you to another dimension of life and, and uh, of faith, of anointing and grace. So he's stretching your faith so that you begin to pray. Sometimes when you get the bone level or bone realm, when you pray, God may not quickly answer your prayer because he is training you to become tough-minded, to become intense, to become very, very strong that you are no more by what you see and what you hear. 
And I believe this is the time to God also he is ready to answer you speedily concerning marriage, concerning uh, children, and uh, so that you can have a family. And this is the time that God wanted to do, to do this with you. So get ready, open up, don't be disappointed or worried about anything because God has answered your prayer in other areas that you sought his face for. But this is the time that he has matured you, he has prepared you because you have been holy, you have been a virgin, you have been anointed, you've been paying your tithe, you've been seeking the of the Lord, you've been praying and doing everything, and there's nothing you could do to bring that marriage, only God would determine. And this is the third time that God is ready to give you what you wanted, and this is the third time. So get ready for the marriage that God has organized for you from today in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible says, Revelation 3, verse 7 to 8, it says, When Jesus opens the door, no one can close. So the Lord has opened doors for you, He has opened every door of marriage. Because marriage, what, what is marital? Marital means. Uh, marriage bed. Uh -huh. So marriage also means family. Uh, so God wanted you to be established in marriage so that uh, you have a family and then it, it goes on, it goes on. So the purpose of God for two of you coming together as a husband and wife will, will, will be accomplished time appointed in Jesus' mighty name. May God bless you. And we are going to read uh, Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 to 12. And I believe you will listen to the word of the Lord that can change your life, give you more insight, more revelation, more understanding for, for you to know the season you are in. It's a good season. This month that we are in, we are about to enter into October. And from between this time and October, that is where God is doing a new thing in your life concerning those of you who are getting ready to be married. God is in control in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yeah, so I'm here to read Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 to 12, and I believe you will listen to it, you will read it from the screen, and that will be applicable for you. Amen. The marriage of Ruth. Uh, then Boaz went up to the city gates where business and legal matters were settled, and sat down, and then the close relative Redeemer of whom Boaz had spoken came by. He said to him, Come over here, friend, and sit down. So he came and sat down. Then Boaz took uh, ten men from the elders of the city and said, Sit down here. And they sat down. He said to the closest relative, Redeemer, Naomi, who has returned from the country of Moab, must sell the plot of land which belonged to our brother Eli Malek. So I thought to let you hear of it, saying, buy it in the presence of those sitting here. And before the elders of my people, if you will redeem it, redeem it, but if not, then tell me, so that I may know, for there is no one besides you to redeem it. And I am next of kin after you. And he said, I will redeem it. Then Boaz said, The day that you buy the fraud from Naomi, you must also acquire Ruth the Moabites, the, the widow of the diseased, to restore the name of the diseased to his inheritance. The closest relative redeemer said, I cannot redeem it for myself because by marrying uh, Moabites, I would jeopardize my own inheritance. Take my right of redemption, purchase yourself because I cannot redeem it. Now, formerly in Israel, this was the custom concerning redeeming and exchanging property. To confirm a transaction, a man pulled off his sander, sander and gave it to the other. This was the way of confirming and attesting in Israel. So, when the closest relative, Redeemer, said to Boaz, buy it for yourself, he pulled off his sandal and, and gave it to Boaz to confirm the agreement. Then Boaz said to the elders and to all the people 
you are witnesses this day that I have bought everything that was Eli Melech's and everything that was Chilion's and Maron's from the hand of Naomi. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabites, the widow of Maron, to be my wife, to restore the name of the diseased to his inheritance, so that the name of the diseased will not be cut off from his brothers or from the gate of his birth praise. You are witnesses today, all the people at the gate, and the elder said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your house like Rachel and Leah, the two who built the household of Israel. May you achieve world and power in Ephrata and become famous in Bethlehem. Further, May your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah because of the offspring which the Lord will give you by this young woman. Amen. All right. So we have read up to uh, verse 12. We have read it. And then all it was talking about how Boaz processed uh, things in order to get roots on his side for the marriage and then they organize everything he just pay off whatever he, he was supposed to do because these days many young men don't even have a clue or knowledge about how to marry but yet they want to have women with them or vice versa but remember that Boaz went through the procedures and uh, all people who were supposed to be there present they all were witnesses to the marriage and uh, so Boaz did the, the knocking and then he did the engagement and it on, went on to the wedding before he was able to stay with the roots and the people were witness about it so that doesn't mean that he has fornicated or sinned or brought a curse of God on him so all those things are there so if for a man you are preparing to marry you need to begin to learn some so many things about how to marry the process or the procedure you have to take to Maui, you have to learn all those things so that uh, you you procure favor, special blessing and generation blessings upon your, your life and your home so that it might be well with you wherever you go. So thank you very much and this is the open door and the time that God has set to give you marriage, marital breakthrough. So I speak the word of God unto you and I will raise the anointing of God, anointing for prosperity, anointing for marital, anointing for children, anointing for blessing, anointing to have a family in the name of Jesus. So wherever you are in Ghana, Africa, and the whole world, where, wherever you are, you are watching me. I pray in the name of Jesus and you are expecting marital breakthrough. May God grant your wish and grant your heart desire from today in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, as he has started a good work, he will perform until the day of prayer. And I know that you are also going to act your faith by sowing your seed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost so that you procure a miracle that you are expecting to become tangible in your own life by the power of the Holy Ghost. May God bless you in Jesus' mighty name. So we are talking about get ready for your marital blessing. And that's where I was able to read Ruth chapter 4, 1 to 12. And I believe you really gotten it well. Okay, so I'm here to give you a few points that will serve as direction, that will help you to boost up your faith, to carry on. Point, the points I'm sharing with you is all about blessings you need in your marriage. Before you marry, there are blessings that need to be start praying about it. You don't have to just jump into marriage or, or, or maybe a relationship and you are just there. But you need to know the indication. You need to know the foundation or the things that you may need in your home. Uh -huh. When God opened the door for you to marry, you need to pray about those things before you enter into the relationship that will take you through the knocking, the engagement and the wedding. And then you have a place to stay. Hallelujah. So I'm here to read this with you and I believe you will learn so much blessings you need in your, in your marriage. A lot of uh, young men and women don't know that the blessing that they ought to have in their marriage or because somebody has married, somebody has an en en engagement or wedding, they are also intended to to uh, hurry up to go and marry but didn't know or don't know the, the indications what they have to do uh -huh, to really uh, establish I mean, a family, they don't know, hallelujah. So number one, you should allow particular people to witness your marriage and to bless you. 
you should allow particular people to witness your marriage and to bless you. Uh -huh. So that is the, from the word go when um, two of you have agreed, man and woman, and both parents also have agreed and it's about to be married. The process is that you have to pray that God will bring in good people. You have to make right choices by getting good people to be around you to witness because when you are doing engagement on wedding, not all people uh, who come to witness your engagement or wedding are good people. So you need to really plan for it and uh, have a choice of people that ought to come to witness your engagement or wedding. Or that somebody can spoil your engagement and or you, your wedding as such. So number one, you should allow particular people, that's allow particular people to witness your marriage and also to bless you. So when they come, they will use their mouth to bless you or they'll give you a token or any any type of gift to for you to begin your life because you allow them to come to be witnesses to your marriage. Okay, so now number two, your marriage should be like Rachel and Leah. Rachel and Leah, they were sisters from one parent who married to uh, Jacob. And uh, Jacob's marriage was so fertile, fruitful, and through that marriage of two sisters to one man called Jacob, they have 12 sons and one daughter called Dinah. And, uh, and God made Jacob fruitful because uh, Abraham transferred the anointing to Isaac. Isaac also gave it to Jacob and it went on to Joseph and Manasseh and it went on. So when it got to the season of uh, what they call it, Jacob for marriage, uh, God led Jacob to marry Leah and Rachel and it was so beautiful huh? so God wanted your marriage to be like that so which you must emulate your marriage should be like Rachel and Leah number three you should marry to build the house of Israel marriage is a responsibility marriage is a work marriage is not fantasy or phantom or fancy dress marriage is not a joke uh -huh. marriage is not like a party pray like a, a, a picnic marriage is a hard work marriage is a hard work marriage is a it's a duty marriage goes with a covenant with god covenant with your partner and it goes on it goes on uh -huh. marriage means it sounds like manage you manage your heart you manage your energy you manage your time you manage your resources you manage your, your your finances you manage your home your house your food your water everything marriage it sounds like manage so you need to do that one your marriage should be like Rachel and Leah and number three you should marry to build the house of Israel because uh, um, through Jacob and Leah and Rachel uh, their children were used of God to establish Israel because Jacob became Israel and through the, the 12 sons of Israel uh, they became the Israelites they gave birth and then they marry and marry and it went on in Egypt they went to I mean the promised land ever to so that is a marriage that you should emulate. Uh, you may have one child, maybe when you marry, you may have a boy and a girl, but that boy and a girl could be the promised children. The heart of each of them could give birth to 10, 10, 10 children, for example, and it, it will be on like that. Hallelujah. All right. So you should marry to build, invented commerce, build the house of Israel. You should marry to build the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So marriage is a responsibility. Marriage is a hard work. It's not a f fantasy or phantom or, uh, or just like a star. Marriage is a hard work. Number four, you should have a vision in your marriage by achieving wealth and power in the world. You should have a vision because um, marriage without a word, marriage without a vision, uh, it, it will bring a problem. The marriage you have a shipwreck and the marriage can die the marriage can suffer and so you, you must have a vision you must have a desire and a vision you should have a vision in your marriage by achieving wealth and power in the world it's a process but it's a vision you have to sow your seed you have to pay your tithe you have to go to church you have to give offerings you have to prophesy to yourself you have to pray even when you marry before and after you have to be declaring God's word every now and then so that whatever God has in intended for, for two of you will come to pass time appointed in Jesus mighty name. Amen. So number five, you should work hard 
to be blessed and be famous in your town. All this, I pick it from uh, Ruth chapter 4, 1 to 12, everything is there. Mm -hmm. So you should work hard. You can't just put your 10 fingers mm -hmm, in between your legs, each of you, and think that God will bring manna from heaven. The days of God bringing manna are over. It is time to work hard, find a job, find something doing. As long as what you are doing, uh, the government is not against it. Police is not against it. Soldiers or navies, they are not against it. Find something doing that you could make an ends meet to take care of your 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 family paying rent house rent water bill etc etc like bill and many more uh -huh. then then you have maybe uh, something that you, you call it investment you'll be investing for the family for the future so that you have something to establish hallelujah you should work hard to be blessed and be famous in your town and number six your house should be the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Your house should be the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. You remember, Judah means praise. Be the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to uh, Judah. Uh -huh. so we are the prophet, we are the priest, and we are the Levite, and also we have the singers, those who worship the Lord, and that is it. So you need to let your marriage be like this. You establish a family, not just you are there because somebody had married married and you two also have gone for one it is not so you need to have a, a vision a direction a purpose concerning marriage and about where you are going in life may god bless you and the last one is a god number seven god will give you many children in your marriage i wish you would say amen yeah god is going to give you many children in your marriage as we have read so in the end boaz and ruth got married and god blessed them and then their first son was Jesse, who had eight sons, and when he grew, Jesse had eight sons, and then the, the last son was who was a David. And through David, as a prophet, Samuel anointed him to be king in Israel. Uh, he, he was a small boy, about 16, 17 years old, that they anointed him in his in the presence of his brethren in the, in the house of his father. But it took a very long time before the prophecy came to pass for David to be king in Israel, the second king in Israel. And out of David, through the line of David, Jesus also came. So we thank God for Ruth, who left uh, Moab and follow the in-law, the mother-in-law, and went to Bethlehem in Judah. It's a very nice story. So you need to maintain uh, determination, hard working. You need to have covenant with God. You need to find somebody that could be your mentor, your coach. You need to carry on with, with, I mean, uh, with your life never give up in life if Ruth had given up there's no way um, <clears throat> there's no way she could have seen all these blessings that were were flowing on her life so be determined don't give up maybe you are 38 maybe you are 35 you are almost 40 and 41 42 don't give up whatever expectations that God has in mind to be given to you this is the time the hour and the season that God is going to show up and is going to give you what you need I pray in the name of Jesus Lord whoever has ahead me this morning I pray that you bless him or her in line of marriage in line of children in line of, of, of my God of uh, establishing a family I pray in the name of Jesus that you provide for them whether spiritual or physical or the man or the woman and I pray the type of man the type of woman that they want to marry Holy Spirit of the living God I bring them before you Lord in the name of Jesus Christ and I pray as you have opened these doors for them O Lord let them begin to actualize for them to enjoy the blessing of the Lord the blessing of the Lord make it rich and add no soda with it may God bless you and I'll come your way again by the grace of God next week Saturday and may God bless you for the attention and the time you do spend to watch our live streams. May God bless you. Have a good day. God bless you.